Why is Pluto so hard to see from Earth, when telescopes like Hubble can see distant galaxies? How is it that New Horizons photos of Pluto were so illuminated, when it's supposed to be so dark out there, so far from the Sun? I love these sorts of questions, as the answers to them give us a fascinating insight into the way the universe works. So if you've ever had questions about Pluto, it's time for you to get some answers. How can Hubble see distant galaxies clearly, but not Pluto? How can Hubble see distant galaxies? Hubble has taken some of the most breathtaking images of space that we know of, giving us clear views of galaxies millions of light years away. And yet, it struggles to take clear images of celestial bodies much closer to us like Pluto and other trans-Neptunian objects. Surely that doesn't make sense. How can it see something so clearly so far away? And yet the most detailed view of Pluto is this. The answer is a lot simpler than you may think. It's all about the angular diameter of the object in question. This fantastic image is the Andromeda Galaxy, a galaxy found roughly 2 million light years away from us. You might think that this distance would make it relatively small from our perspective. But even though it is so far away, use a high exposure camera and you'll find that it is actually six times bigger than the sun or a full moon in our sky. This is because it is big, 220,000 light years across, and at that size. 2 million light years away from us is not enough to make it seem tiny. Its size and distance from us means that it covers 3 degrees across the night sky. It is so big in fact, that when Hubble looked at it, it couldn't see the whole thing in one go. It simply couldn't zoom out enough. So, this image is actually a mosaic of hundreds of Hubble exposures, and even then, they couldn't fit the whole galaxy in at once. This is true of other galaxies as well. Now, most galaxies aren't as close or as big as Andromeda, but they are still big enough for Hubble to image them and see interesting details while it's at it. Here's the Pinwheel Galaxy, 21 million light years away. Now notice how it covers the gap between some foreground stars found in our galaxy. That's to give you some idea of how big it is in the sky. If you could see it clearly with your naked eye, it would appear just smaller than the moon. I hope this is giving you some perspective. Even though it is so far away, it is huge, and so, still has a large apparent size in our sky. As you can imagine, this makes it much easier to image. Just as a side note, I can only imagine how beautiful it would be if all galaxies local to us were bright enough to be visible to the naked eye. But what about Pluto? We might need to clarify our measurements. To describe the size of something in the sky, astronomers use degrees, arc minutes and arc seconds. 60 arc minutes in a degree, and 60 arc seconds in an arc minute. So Andromeda was 3 degrees across, and the moon is about 30 arc minutes across. The Pinwheel Galaxy is about 28 arc minutes across. Pluto is a minute 0.11 arc seconds across at its closest approach to us. That makes it ridiculously small in our night sky. A wonder that Hubble can resolve any details on it at all. But again, closer and larger planets, which have bigger apparent sizes, can be resolved more easily by Hubble. That's why sending New Horizons to Pluto back in 2015 was so exciting, we really didn't know what to expect before we got there as we don't have a telescope powerful enough to resolve any details on Pluto. And so everything New Horizons sent back was a revelation. Here's one last example from right here on Earth, to really hit the idea home. In this picture, you can see objects at various distances and sizes. I want you to think of this flower as Pluto. It's small and blurry at this distance. And yet, there's some buildings in the background, much further away than the flower. Imagine these are the galaxy's Hubble images. So, that should clear up the mystery of our first question. On to number two. Why does Pluto and its big moon share an orbit around a point in empty space? Not all of you would know that Pluto was doing this, but those who had heard of it might have cause to wonder. Is there something invisible and hugely dense there, perhaps some kind of tiny, lurking black hole? As the New Horizons probe approached Pluto and Charon in 2015, it saw this orbiting phenomenon up close and in detail. This is because everything in space, not just Pluto, orbits around a barycenter. A barycenter is the center of mass between two objects. For most of the planets, with their much greater mass than the moons orbiting them. The center of mass in these situations resides within the planet itself, meaning it wobbles as its moon's gravity tugs on it. With Pluto and Charon though, they are much more similar in mass. Which means the point in which they orbit is outside of Pluto, making it appear like they are swinging around an invisible object in space. So, another enigma about Pluto solved. 
Now what about number 3? How is Pluto so bright? Surely Pluto would be pitch black in reality, right? Well the answer is, with your naked eye if you were to look at Pluto. It would indeed be darker than in these images, but interestingly not as dark as you may suspect. Pluto is an average of 40 times further away from the Sun than the Earth, and only has a 1600th of the sunlight. Direct sunlight on Earth is 100,000 lumens per square meter, so on Pluto it would be around 60, the equivalent to an indoor stairway or corridor lighting. Even if that level was a problem for our cameras, we can still see darker objects by utilizing longer exposure times. Why is Pluto not a planet anymore? Before I explain, did you know that we once were considered to have a hundred planets in our solar system? It's true. Throughout the ages, the number of planets in our solar system has gone up and down quite a lot. And no, before you ask. This is not because planets suddenly appeared and disappeared, but rather due to how they were discovered. Since antiquity, there were five planets beyond Earth, which are the ones visible to the naked eye, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. The ancient Greeks added the Sun and the Moon to their list of planets, but that idea never really caught on. In the late 1700s, Uranus was discovered, which was revolutionary at the time as no one considered there could be more planets beyond the visible five. After this discovery, more and more planet candidates were being found, like Ceres, Vesta, Pallas and Juno, which are all found in what we now know as the asteroid belt, or the large belt of asteroids between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter. A lot of people in the world feel like Pluto has been hard done by. But Pluto was just another victim of this ruthless refinement of categorization. In 1930, Pluto was discovered, and with the excitement of finding something so large and distant, it was classified as a planet. However, within a few decades, it was discovered that it didn't follow the conventions of traditional planets. The planets we know have circular orbits that align roughly with the plane of the solar system. Pluto, on the other hand, orbits at an angle to the solar system, and its orbit is so elliptical that at some points during its year, it's closer to the Sun than Neptune. But it was also unique, so no one minded it being called a planet. But then, in the 1970s, Pluto was discovered to be a lot tinier than expected. It turned out that its mass is only one-sixth of our moon. This made things a little awkward. Why call Pluto a planet, but not our moon when it was so much bigger than Pluto? Just like the discovery of the asteroid belt, it quickly became apparent that there was another belt beyond the orbit of Neptune, now known as the Kuiper Belt. Also, because of the classification change, there is a silver lining for the Once Planet series, it got promoted from being an asteroid to becoming a dwarf planet. So, better than nothing. Conclusion. So there you have it. For questions about Pluto solved. But how many more questions have now arisen? Perhaps as you've watched the icy beauty of Pluto and learned of its mysteries, all that's happened is it's got your mind turning in even more directions. Like the mythical Hydra, maybe this is a beast that never can be truly slain with just chopping off its heads. But that's part of the beauty of the universe. But for now, whatever you were wondering about Pluto, hopefully you now know a little bit more. All the best, and see you next time.